Hey all, welcome back to another episode of SJ Games Live. My name's Hunter, and I'm here with legendary munchkin <laughs> artist John Kavalik, the originator. <laughs> How's it going, John? Very well, thank you. Um, very well indeed. How are you? Doing well. And we are talking, I think, pretty much one of the biggest munchkin releases we've had in a while. Steve Jackson's Munchkin presents Batman. And you'll notice. This is John's art. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it is. Holy cow. How did you get that to happen? We, we, su we surprised him. We decided to take some of his <laughs> but not a game. No. Uh, jo John, you've worked on this for quite a while. Uh, we mm -hmm. talked about last week, actually, in Steve's interview, uh, how long this has kind of been in the works. So yes, uh, I hope it's cool seeing this in, in person-ish. <laughs> it, <is laughs> so, it is so cool seeing it. Uh, it is absolutely a thrill there is i mean you know having it at the point where it's going to be in people's hands relatively soon and it's actually in the pipes and it's done it's everything uh it is exciting it is yes. really exciting hey, having a physical thing about this like having it in my <laughs> hands it, it didn't feel real <laughs> <laughs> for as long as we worked on this, uh, it never felt real until I saw it. Because no matter what we said about Munchkin Batman, again, I, I, I don't want to keep bringing it up, but like it's just been in developed for so long that mm -hmm. <laughs> we were like, like Munchkin Batman, sure, that'll be it. Uh, yes. But uh, hot lead is coming too. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> well, that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I did. I, that uh, goes we'll, out to the old timers. <laughs> oh man. You're going to have the forums lighting up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we did mention it last week, but I want to mention it again, folks. Uh, this is coming to Kickstarter really soon. Actually, hopefully next week. We're going we're gonna to see. Uh, that's, the, that's the aim. Uh, so keep it on that. We'll have a link to the Kickstarter in the comments below on this interview. Uh, you can click on it. Click notify me. You'll get an alert when we go live. And you'll want to get an alert when we go live because there's a couple of interesting things that are going to be happening on there uh well we won't talk about it specifically john john is going to be involved in one of them hopefully uh <laughs> speaking of which john will also be coming to fenorcon uh you know barring any you know changes with covid and whatnot but that will be happening april 29th to may 1st and yes. we're really excited about that cannot wait very yes, much looking forward pumped. to it that's gonna be a blast uh and you can uh, register for that we'll have a link in the comments below for that as well uh but with all the uh, links out of the way, let's dive in. We're going to do a few uh, few questions with John. And if you have any thing you want to ask him, we may not have time for everyone. But uh, if you post a comment, we'll check it out and you know vet it and make sure it's not just asking him a dirty question. <laughs> and we'll ask John. I am uh, easily distracted. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so you've been doing comic and game artistry artistry for a while you've been doing <laughs> dork tower you, you obviously are the first munchkin artist you've done tons of munchkin games and expansions uh but what is your history with batman because because one of the things on social media pointed out like you're a batman artist now you can officially call yourself a batman artist I know. that's a big deal for a lot of artists it's really cool it is so cool i mean i'm literally like you know i i, I want to act professional about this but you know act like you've been there before but Feel this is act unprofessional <laughs> i i do that all the time it is it is so cool it is so very cool um yeah it's 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 almost it's kind of a dream coming true uh batman is one of the first comics i remember reading but when i was a kid uh would be about five or six um and my parents must have bought me these two big compilations uh dc comics they, they were not you know nothing like the the books the really lovely full color books you get now but these were collections of superman in one volume batman in the second volume in the other volume and it was sort of like the history of both superheroes. So up to, you know, 1976, let's say. <laughs> um, actually, no, that, that wouldn't have been. That would have been, wow, late 60s. Because we hadn't moved back to England yet. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, I wish I hadn't started that, that path now. Uh, but yes. So, uh, but it was this, this, this collection of Batman 
from like the very earliest when he was, you know, it was focusing on the detective aspect of his nature, uh, going up through some late sixties versions of Batman. And I loved it all. It was just fantastic. So yeah, literally one of the first two comic uh, heroes I ever read. And I just have adored it since then. It's one of my favorites too. I, I, I think I had a similar introduction just a little bit later with those compilations. <laughs> that was always a, kind of that was always available everywhere because i didn't have a comic shop it was just kind of like you'd have a grocery store back then oh, and you man. could get comics <laughs> you know back then the comic stores uh, the comics we, we would get um would be in these stores that sold all kinds of magazines and also tobacco i mean do, do people you know is, is it just me who associates the smell of cigars and tobacco with comics it's, it's i think that I think that might have been with us too, because we had a small, t- I was a small town. So yeah. we had a lot of things in one place yes. <laughs> and that was kind of the same deal. Like the uh, tobacco liquor store comic <laughs> stuff. That was kind of where you would find <laughs> that kind of stuff. <laughs> what a combination. Tobacco. Get us, you know, get the kids hooked young, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, but yeah. And so then um, in the uh, 19, in 1980, uh, in London, when I was going to college, I was working at the Forbidden Planet, the very first Ooh. Forbidden Planet in London on Denmark Street, uh, just close to Tottenham Court Road Station. And I was working in the comics section in the back of the store. So, you know, getting the new comics as soon as they got in every week was a huge thing. Uh, so, yeah, comics, uh, comic books have been, you know, in my blood for quite some time. And Batman is really right up there. And I hate to say this, this is going to sound terrible to anybody but me. He's right up there with Howard the Duck for me. <laughs> there you go. No, see, Howard the Duck rules. I love Howard the Duck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Those comics were fantastic. They're so good. They, yeah. they, 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 they are perfect parody. That's yes. just how, yeah. Uh, and you mentioned, uh, this is just kind of going back to the, what you said for uh, the detective era of Batman, which is my favorite era of batman mm-hmm. like when it really focused on detective stuff i was yeah. a really big fan of uh the long halloween when they kind of went mm-hmm. back to that detectiveness of him yes i really enjoyed that uh let's see so stylistically obviously munchkin is its own style batman generally has its own style uh you kind of just took it all meshed it and it really like i know you you don't necessarily want to say this, but you meshed it perfectly. Well, thank you. <laughs> you. You took it, you mixed it really well. Uh, so where does this kind of like rank up? I know, I know there's a lot of cards in the set. We've mentioned it before. It's over 250 cards. So it's a, this is a huge set. This is essentially a set <laughs> plus an expansion. Yes. Uh, where does this kind of rank with the amount of work you've had to put into it? How much, uh, how was this, how different was this project compared to other projects for you? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, work-wise, it was about the same. I mean, the nice thing is uh, Steve Jackson Games gives me uh, some time at the front end so I can just sketch and get to know the characters and I don't have to dive in and start cranking out cards right away. And that's always, always extraordinarily helpful, especially with a project like uh, Batman, where you've got all of these characters who've been around for decades in most cases. Um actually in all Harley's decades now. Um, And, you know, these trying to mesh them with the Munchkin style is a huge amount of fun. Uh, It it first, probably the first Munchkin project I had to do something like that for was Munchkin Conan. Um, But, you know, since then there've been all, you know, uh, Wizard of Oz, uh, Warhammer 40K, um to a lesser extent shakespeare you know but you know those those characters are known and loved if not you know always graphically uh depicted yeah it's not like a license but it's a known quantity right right but this is this is probably actually most similar to 40k and to sigmar uh because you've got it's it's a big deal. It's a big honking deal. Uh, this is something that's been read by millions and millions of people, loved by millions worldwide. And trying to bring the Munchkin sensibility to something like that is uh, 
it's job one essentially on any of these kinds of projects. Fortunately, the Munchkin humor is always there at its core. So I get to play off that. And, you know, Steve did an incredible job with this set. Um, and it was just a blast reading through it. And the characters came together fairly quickly. I think, I think the Joker was the first one I attempted. And I was really happy with how he turned out. And you know, once the Joker was down, everything else really fell into place. Yeah, once you get kind of the iconic look of your main guys, yeah. I'm assuming Batman was kind of similar. You had to knock out what you wanted Batman to look like. Yes, yes. Uh, so, yeah, Batman is, you know, uh, much more serious, uh, obviously. Um, Robin, I was getting really goofy with. I don't know if, uh, no, the, the Lego Batman movie, I don't think was out when I started working on these, but going with a really goofy Robin was uh, important to me. Yeah. I, I really like the, the Robin. I like Harley Quinn for a similar reason. Actually, Steve's commented multiple times on Harley Quinn about how he really likes your, your Harley Quinn in particular. Yeah. And I think that really captures the energy, the kind of chaos of that character. I think, you know, the, this, all of them, I've just, uh, I, I was, I'm very hard on my own work. So it's, it's kind of, difficult for me to sit here and say yeah i love that love that that was great no awesome. i I um, i'll say that for you <laughs> but i and i i finished the project incredibly satisfied with how it turned out um there is you know there's a i was trying to go for kind of an elastic almost warner brothers character actually i guess they are isn't batman yeah it's, War uh, yeah, it's warner brothers yep well, there you go. <laughs> good thing there. Um, but yeah, I was trying to throw, you know, obviously Harley and her hammer have got that Bugs Bunny kind of energy to them. Um, and uh, yeah, just just start to finish. This was so much fun. And uh, yeah, I've got to say, possibly this is my favorite Munchkin set to have drawn. Um, oh, wow. It's, you know, I'm a huge Warhammer uh geek and i'm a huge shakespeare geek um and i was incredibly happy with how wizard of oz came out incredibly ridiculously happy with that one but you know i cannot wait to get it I'm, I'm i'm jealous here i'm sitting here watching you with that box yes. you know and i'm not gonna get one for quite some time uh but we'll get it to you as fast as we get a copy this out this one uh, pre-production but we'll get you a good one <laughs> we'll get you a lot of good ones <laughs> thank you thank you um so yeah, it was just, I mean, it was a fun set to do. The humor was great as always. Um, the nice thing is at this point, I don't know. Okay, so the 250 cards here, and I stopped counting when I got to 7,500 Munchkin cards. Sure. Um, so I don't I do. know. <laughs> I don't know if I've included Batman in that count or not. Um, but, you know, it was it was not a difficult project at all. It was a lot of fun uh you know it made it made deadline um the art department at steve jackson games is fantastic to work with i mean the coloring they do on my goofy little drawings is outstanding um i kind of you know uh think i need to send them presents every now and then <laughs> thank you for making myself look good guys and 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 ladies and everyone and whoever um but yeah it was just it was a uh, start to finish delightful process so yeah, i'm sure they're not not every project can be like that but it's pretty cool when a, a dream project kind of ends up like that i'm sure and then the other nice thing was uh dc uh warner whoever is part of their whoever is in charge of of approving art so easy to work with like no problems whatsoever i don't think we had more than a couple if even that, I don't remember any being sent back for revisions. No, it wasn't a ton. Uh, and yeah, they, they've been a dream to work with. So yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Uh, let's see. We do have a few fan questions. Uh, just to let everyone know, I do see those. We're going to pop in at the end, just in case some of them get covered throughout the rest oh, of sure. it. But, um, so yeah, you've been doing 
Munchkin art for a while now. You do a lot of other games too. Some people may not necessarily know, like the Shea series for us. You've done mm-hmm. a lot of other games for us, but also other games, uh, obviously Apples to Apples for a long time. You did uh, <laughs> a lot of different games. Uh, I know my copy of uh, Cash and Guns is your art. Uh, there's uh. a lot of, you have quite a few things out there. Uh, does does a project that still have like surprises, does, does do, when you make a new game, uh, or give something is is it pretty formulaic or no do you still have like moments that like still shock you a little bit well you know i mean shock is an interesting choice of words <laughs> <laughs> um but you know you do try to do a little bit better with every project that comes along and i love what i do and i love trying to be better at it so with something like a new munchkin game you know, you try to put a little more time into that every time. You try to see what you can get out of the the basic Munchkin art style to help it evolve, to bring something new to it. Whereas with other games like Cash and Guns, um, there's a sense of, well, I want people to know it's my art, but I also want them to know it's not Munchkin. <laughs> it's, sure. Um and so I think Steve actually commented on Cash and Guns, uh, how it was, you know, not Munchkin. I was like, that is exactly what I was aiming for. And it sounds odd to say that, but I'm working on a new game, an unnamed game for a French company now. And it's really pushing my work in a whole new direction. And I'm very happy with it. And that is the kind of thing which will, down the line, also help my work with Munchkin. Well, and that, you mentioned kind of like your, your things changing over time and kind of pushing your style. Uh, some people don't necessarily even see the change in the Munchkin, but if you really look at the art over the years, I mean, going through the first edition of Munchkin, the eyes have changed since then. There's a lot of stuff in the style that has been updated, even just in the, the original vanilla style of Munchkin. Yeah. Compared to now, I'm like, I think you, you could lay the stuff side by side. It's like you could tell it's the same person, but you just. <laughs> It just kind of evolved over time. I could draw the fourth finger now. That's really important. <laughs> it, it reminds I me. I took a night like class. A, I took a night class. On that the one. F- f- fourth finger nights. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, it reminds Friday, me a lot of cool. like early Simpsons, later Simpsons. Not super late, but like like yeah, the like, you, you see the early ones. You're like it's it's obviously the Simpsons, but now it's like this is what I associate with them now. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. Of, um it was it was a little bit odd to me when um the russian munchkin came out which looks like a fantastic game but that poor artist who i feel so (laughs) sorry for apparently was tasked with trying to draw like i drew 20 years ago (laughs) and it's um it was not i mean i know a lot of people love that art um I uh, I would give so much to go back and redraw it all now. <laughs> it's, uh, there are some things like you know. I mean, it's not it's not it's not terrible. It's it's what it was. It's not my style anymore. It's not Munchkin style necessarily anymore. Um, I'm not ashamed of the art. It's not bad art. It's just very different. And I think the uh, word is charming. Charming. <laughs> there you go. Yes, I, I'm a charming artist. Um, <laughs> And, uh, well, like some cards, like the Duck of Doom, remains one of my all-time favorite cards. It's uh, that, you could slip that into a set now, and it would look fairly similar. But a couple of years ago, we came out with the Munchkin Light set. Yes. And that was a lot of fun, because that gave me a chance to revisit a lot of these old cards and, you know, bring them up to the new style. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, when you're drawing yourself, you don't notice the change necessarily. You try to push yourself, you try to do a little bit better. And all of a sudden you look back at something you did five years ago and you have to say, Whoa, I hate that. (laughs) No, (laughs) no, I, I, I seldom, I seldom hate my stuff. Uh, but there are, there are moments when I'm in the middle of something, uh, but no, I've, I've grown to accept the change and that, you know, what I'm drawing now in five years time, I may not like any better than what I drew five years ago or 10 years ago. And Munchkin and Dork Tower being the two ongoing um, 
uh, projects for me over the last 20, 25 years, that's where you can really tell. Um, both of them have changed enormously. That's, that's fair. For the, they, better, they look for the better, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, I could not imagine doing Munchkin Batman 20 years ago. That would have been the worst. Uh, in the old Munchkin style, maybe yeah, it could have worked. Maybe it could have worked, but I just... It would have definitely been different, for sure, I think, yeah. for fans of Munchkin. Some, some people may enjoy it, but I, I, I'm going to side with you on this one. I like yeah. seeing the eyes <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> so I think that gives... Because that gives a lot of these characters a lot of character. There's also this thing I used to do, which I don't do anymore, and I still, you'd get, okay, this is. So for so, like for five or 10 years, I was really obsessed with, I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, just doing that giant, sm the, 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 the mouth and the teeth at the bottom yes. of the face. And I forget the name of the cartoonist who I first picked that up from, and I'm blanking on her name. Dang it. But I just took this. I liked it in her style, and I kind of incorporated it to my style, and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's just horrifying. And I'm so glad I cut that out. Oh, my goodness. But that was a moment in your career. It's, it's interesting. It was. You can actually, if, if you go back. And Carol Lay. Carol Lay is Terrible. the cartoonist. She's phenomenal. Her work was amazing. Um, but anyway. Oh, no. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Uh, and you could, I love that we kind of have a living history of that now. I don't know if you love this much having a living history. <laughs> that's being sold, but, you know. No, no, no. It's, Honestly. It's really cool. Back then, I was, you know, I just, I had just quit the Wisconsin State Journal. I was the editorial cartoonist uh, back there, uh, back then, the daily uh, newspaper here in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I had just made the commitment right before uh, Judith and I got married uh, that I was going to try to give cartooning and illustration my full-time go. And I had so much to learn. And unfortunately, with, you know, um, probably more Shea Geek, which came before Munchkin than Munchkin. Um, but I was working with terrible materials back then. I was working with awful pens. And it's like, luckily, when it gets shrunk down, you know, people don't notice it uh, as much. But, oh, my gosh, the line quality of some of those early pieces, I just, I shudder. I, you know, and uh, the fact that I'm here you know, and I can geek about line quality and how you know, I'll finish stuff up in an iPad Pro now so that I can get these perfect lines. Um, 20 years younger me would just not stop vomiting at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you did mention earlier a few of the different licenses you've done. Uh, so in addition to Batman, you've obviously done uh, the ah lost track of there a uh, warhammer age of sigmar warhammer yeah. forty thousand, even older conan uh mm -hmm. and you could consider stuff like uh, uh shakespeare i'd say is kind of a licensed hero wizard of oz even though it's public yeah. domain it's it's notable characters that you know you're trying to make your mark on necessarily oh, yeah. uh even alice in wonderland because you did the uh, munchkin wonderland that's uh, right i forgot about that one yes you've done a lot of the do, do you when you get a project like that versus say Munchkin, where you're kind of defining the characters in Munchkin, mm -hmm. uh, but with the license, you're having to work within some parameters. Uh, does the energy change? Do you have, do you feel a more of a sense of responsibility with that? Or just how does, how's that different than working on a, a regular vanilla set or even not so vanilla <laughs> set, like, Munchkin is never vanilla. That's true. A, at the very, at that, the very least it's Rocky road. <laughs> An unlicensed set, yes, it is full of nuts. Yes, yes, totally. <laughs> What's well, the oops, all nuts? Oops. Um, there is, I mean, I, I'm very fortunate in that all of the licensed work I've been a part of are licenses I genuinely love, and I do want to bring my best every day, but in particular for something which I'm a huge fan of as well. Um, Shakespeare was very important to me to get right. I love that the jokes were brilliant. Uh, the whole concept was crazy. The fact that it did so well on Kickstarter was enormously gratifying. Um, but you know, there is uh, 
it's difficult because you know you don't want to say i do not want to say i ever approach munchkin with anything but love and with this desire to be better than the last time but there is a responsibility in a sense when you are charged with borrowing somebody else's intellectual property somebody else's characters somebody else's um loved uh stories and you want to do it justice you know uh warhammer is a really good example um i i've been a warhammer geek since well uh, you know this is going to date me <laughs> like as if as if stories of reading comics in the 60s haven't but my the first proper game store i ever really frequented um was this little shop in London. In first time I went there was 1977 or 1978. It was just, you may have heard of it. It's called Games Workshop. Um, <laughs> they had just opened their first store in Hammersmith, uh, which is a, um, a suburb um, in London, one of the outer, outer lying districts of London. And um, that's where I discovered Dungeons and Dragons. That's where I discovered Traveler. That's where I picked up a ton of Steve's micro games. Um, and so when Warhammer, when the opportunity came along to tackle the Warhammer world, oh, I was I was salivating at the chance. Um, it was, uh, you know, for the Emperor. What, what more do you need to say? <laughs> Um, and, um, it was, this is the only time I've ever done this. I'm normally, I'm normally pretty reserved, but this is, you know, much like the Batman geek out of mine. Uh, when I was in London in 2019, Christmas, 2019, I think it was right before the pandemic. I think Warhammer had either just come out or it was about to come out. Um, I, I could be getting the date slightly I think, wrong. I think it was it just come out. It was around that okay. same time frame. Something like that. Um, and I strolled into a games workshop store on Tottenham Court Road. <laughs> and the guys come up and start talking to me as they do in you know, the, the sales folk at any games workshop store in the world. And said, are you familiar with uh, Warhammer? It's like, familiar? I just illustrated Munchkin Warhammer. <laughs> one of the one of the guys who worked there was actually one of the people who was doing the art specs of oh, wow. it. And so they were all geeking out as well. So it's like I've got to geek out with the games workshop folks. And I've got this, you know, standing invite to go up to Nottingham when I get the chance. That's um, awesome. So, you know, I've been doing this professionally for close to 30 years now, I think. Um, and the, it never gets old. It never gets dull. It never gets, uh, boring. It's just so much fun. I cannot believe I'm doing this. Like 16 year old me would be so flipping sight. Literally what was going through my head. I was like, what if you could go back in time to 1978 to a guy who worked in a comic store and just going to the first games workshop said, Hey, don't worry. <laughs> In a little while, <laughs> you're going to be drawing all this professionally. <laughs> yeah. that, that comic, you'll be an artist. This, yeah, it's they'll be paying you. Don't worry about. It. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I'm not going to complain. Uh, it's, oh, absolutely. it's amazing. I mean, it's That's... really nice waking up at 5:45 and looking forward to getting behind the drawing table. That's got to be a good feeling. It is. Well, I, I've covered a lot of our topics here. Uh, but we have a, quite a few comments from uh, people. Uh, we'll we'll go down. I'll go down the list here. Uh, most of them are actually pretty pretty original. We haven't covered all of them. So uh, first up, uh, we got Batthulu here. Great name for today, <laughs> Batthulu. Uh, any chance we can see your Batman art in a comic book? Uh, so I'll I, I'll take part of this. Odds are, a lot of it comes down to rights and stuff like that, uh, and what. This is all DC and Warner Brothers owned essentially for like the artist side of things. Like we we commissioned the art from John. We're getting the art from John, but we're getting it for a game. We have the game license to do that. Uh, so but, unlikely, but 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 you know, though, but 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 we never know, say never. 
we never say, we never say never, but you know, I know uh, a friend of mine online is Gail Simone, who has written yes. to me you know, like some of the best Bat World stuff. And you know, one if of these happens. days, one of these days, if you know, I should just say to my good buddy Gail, um, please hey, do. let's pitch something to DC because uh, I would be totally down for that. I mean, Please. and, you know, honestly, with comics these days, it's great because, you know, I've got a kid. And so I've been buying a lot of comics over the years, but all of the comics aim for younger readers, stuff like Alt Balthazar doing the Tiny Titans or doing yes. Little Heck Boy. I'm sorry, he called it Little Hellboy, but in this household, we called it Little Heck Boy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, it is, I mean, there, there's so much um, in um going on in the world of comic books that i'm sure there you know it would not be totally out of place to if the right story idea came along absolutely not we, plus i, I mean be... we have had the munchkin comics in the past like yes. there's a precedent for munchkin comics uh we've there... had uh like you said tiny titans art has actually done munchkin sets for us that's he right did the, uh, he did a guest super stars. munchkin yes right right Star's edition so yes. we got a chance to take a look. So we've had a lot of crossover there. Plus we're friends with Gail as well. We've sent her some games. She's she's oh, a much good fan. <laughs> she's the best. Gail yeah, we need, the best. We need to hook up on that. That would yeah. be great. I mean, by the way, shout out to Gail Simone. Enormous fan of Secret Six. Love oh, Secret Six. One of my favorite comics of all time. Oh, Just wow. Just absolutely yes. the best. Bane, that made me fall in love with Bane. Bane is like my favorite <laughs> Batman villain because of the I love Six. drawing Bane in here. Bane way. is awesome. As soon as yeah. I saw his art in here, yeah. I was like, uh, you did it. You got it. Nailed it. First try. <laughs> that He's was a great. ton of fun. I need to use that as like my avatar or something on the forum. <laughs> yeah. uh, see, uh, Paul Papas uh, my apologies if you answered, uh, but what is it about ducks? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So ducks, um, just ever since uh, uh, the Duck of Doom came out, and then the plush Duck of Doom came out. Um, I was doing a charity bike ride. Uh, and it was, um, you know, my great friend, you know, sadly missed Andrew, um, who said, uh, why don't you put a Duck of Doom on your helmet for the charity ride? And I thought that seems like a stupid idea but okay and so I, I put this pledge level on for this charity bike ride and if you know if we raise four thousand dollars i will do the 60 mile bike ride with a duck of doom strapped to my head and we raised four thousand dollars that first year uh and um it was raining and oh, no. that that <laughs> dang duck was absorbent <laughs> it's like and it just got heavier and heavier as the ride went on and then it started slouching to the one side and so between uh the duck of doom and so anyway the the, the charity bike ride which happens every year uh for local food uh charities uh this last year we actually ended up raising twenty thousand dollars for that and a big part of that is because steve jackson lets me do these munchkin charity postcards which go out to people for 25 dollar donations but because it's been so successful i've been doing the bike ride with both the duck of doom and the duck of gloom strapped to my helmets and it's just and it's always yes ducks just have become not to go back to batman villains but ducks have definitely become the bane of my existence so they're just the they're just the thing. You got to avoid them. Uh, yep. The the Duck of Doom dice bag's coming out. It's got, That's right. Ducks, ducks are continuing. Yep. They and our, local, our local baseball team is the Madison Mallards. So for some reason, my my world seems very duck-centric. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Thoth Kristen asked, uh, the cards seem more serious than typical Munchkin cards. Is Munchkin Batman more serious? No, it's extraordinarily silly. It is very, very silly. Um, <laughs> the the plots, the weapons, everything like that. Um, there, it's 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 uh, it's about as silly as Munchkin can get. I, if I can give an example, uh, one of the crimes is dip Commissioner Gordon in peanut butter. 
and <laughs> the SWAT team is holding fly swatters. So <laughs> it feels yeah. like Munchkin to me. I think it, if you just look at Batman himself, he's goofy looking, but he's very stern. So maybe I could come off as a little more serious, but trust me, yeah. everything around Batman <laughs> is, is oh, extremely yeah. goofy. Uh, Paul asks, what was the easiest card and the most difficult card to illustrate in the set and why? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> That's an interesting question. It is. Um, I, I'm i going to say, well, sometimes I, I, without the card list in front of me, um, the weapons are frequently the easiest cards in any Munchkin set. Uh, so just going by um, you know, if there's a, in, in Warhammer, there are a lot of weapons and it's, those are pretty much straight up. Um, the, um, I think, okay. Well, if you had to just pick out the, a Batman, what do you think on that one? Oh, there's one with Batman sitting at a cafe and I forget what the card title was, <clears throat> but it's essentially Batman sitting in a cafe and with a French waiter who I think is also a villain possibly, but I'm not, I think I've I, seen I, the card. I can't remember the call, name offhand, but yes, I I've seen that. Yeah. It. Um, but let, let's, let me, I, I, I'm, um, I think of all the characters, Robin was the easiest to draw because Robin is just ridiculous. And again, maybe I'd need to look up to see if Lego Batman had come out first. Um, but I just totally th threw Robin in there as this silly boy wonder. Um, the most difficult of the characters to draw. Actually, you know, I can't because it's one of the cards which didn't make it into the final set, not because of any art sure. reasons, but it was a very, very complex card of a certain character um, uh, being hoisted by, um, what, what's what's the name? when you Palanquin? Thank you, Palanquin. Because um, I, I know what card you're referring to, or what character you're referring to. Yes. We can't talk about it. <laughs> no, we can't. Did um, not make the set. <laughs> that was a son of a bitch. <laughs> it, it ended up not being used. Um, which is fine. We got a good story out of it, and that's yeah. worth it. <laughs> it's just kind of funny that the hardest card didn't even make it. Yes. But, you know, in Games Workshop, you know, in, in the Games Workshop series, a lot of times, some of these super deluxe characters uh, or some of the giant weapon systems are, without question, the toughest cards to draw, um, even if you make them very cartoony. These are extraordinarily detailed uh, items. And, you know, if you're going to be doing this, you know, uh, particular, uh, let's call it a hover barge, filled with techno skeletons um, <laughs> you know uh um uh <coughs> um, <Yes. laughs> you know it's, it's got to be a fair representation because everybody who plays the game knows it so you got to get those right yeah and even with batman where you may flip through the set once you guys have it in hands at home uh and say like oh this is just goofy weapons and goofy stuff you know a lot of this stuff has some form of reference that we still have to stick to and be like a freeze gun for Mr. Freeze, even though it's just a gun that freezes people. You can yeah, I can be whatever you want. <laughs> there's references for it. Like there's, there's animated series. There's, mm -hmm. there's been, you know, movies, there's been comics. So he has to find a, we have to find this like median where it's like, this is acceptable to DC. And it still looks cool and interesting on a card in that same art style. So it's uh, it's an interesting kind of back and forth, I'd say. Bat and forth. Yeah. Bat and forth. Bat and forth. Sorry. <laughs> bat and forth. No. It's bat-tastic. <laughs> it is. Uh, and this isn't really a question, but Eric our, uh, Eric Dow, our event coordinator, thank you for working on all those events, including Fedorcon coming up. Okay. Uh, he said your Warhammer art was awesome and uh, great at breaking the third wall. Fourth wall, I assume. Uh, <laughs> making fun of players. No, it's but, like the fourth uh, finger. It's the third wall. But in, he's working in on that fourth wall. We're gonna yeah, break it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, it, making fun of the players, not just the game, was awesome. I I know particular one of my favorite cards from that was uh, uh, unpainted. Was it? Uh, unpainted <laughs> yes. I love that. 
Oh. Just love it. Uh, let's see. Paul had a few questions here. We'll probably go through a few of his. Um, let's see. What was your fav- favorite set to work on? Uh, he says, I guess Warhammer, but uh, what was the favorite and what was the hardest set? And hardest doesn't have to be bad, just, you know, maybe took the longest. Or- okay. No, here, here you go. I've got this. <laughs> um, okay. So it's kind of equal between Shakespeare, Batman, and Warhammer. I mean, I've just loved all of those. Now, the most difficult set is one which actually turned out great. I'm really proud of it. But what happened was Andrew Hackard and I were working on Wizard of Oz. And right before Andrew got on a boat for the Joko cruise, he said, oh, yeah, don't, don't worry about Wizard of Oz anymore. That's been canceled. It's like, okay, I, I won't worry about it anymore. Um, so Andrew's on a boat <laughs> out of contact with the world for a while. And he gets back and he gives me this phone call. He says, John, Wizard of Oz wasn't canceled. <laughs> the deadline is the same. <laughs> so in three weeks, Andrew and I pulled together Wizard of Oz. And uh, it's one of those cases where the extra pressure worked because I love that set. I love how it turned out. I love Andrew's cards. I'm assuming most of it was written already, but you know, Andrew's also, Andrew was also pretty much a genius as well as just being an awesome person and, you know, a true polymath and he could just get all of these stuff pulled together from all over the place. And so I was, um, Normally, when I work on a full Munchkin set, I've been given eight weeks from start to finish. Uh, this was done within a three-week period. <laughs> it was it was tough, but we got it done. And I didn't know that was backstory. That is a great set. Yeah, so I decided you know not to tell many people about that, and you know, um, well, you know, sadly now that Andrew is no longer with us, um, you know, uh, I do think I need to say it because he was just that brilliant. He really was. Uh, Andrew is amazing. If, if uh, for people watching, Andrew uh, was really heavily involved in Batman, even though it's coming out now and he did pass away last year. Uh, a lot of the stuff that's coming out still, there's a ton of his legacy. And obviously his legacy is going to be in every Munchkin game that mm-hmm. ever comes out because he made the blueprint for us. Like Steve, Steve made the game with, and then Andrew has over the years done so much Munchkin stuff. He, he's kind of the reason Munchkin games feel cohesive to me. I feel like uh, he had so much input on the humor, the way the Mm -hmm. cards are balanced, the kind of the makeup of a set, like a general Munchkin set, you kind of of have things you can depend on. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of that is Andrew's influence. And he, he, again, this has been in development for such a long time. He did a little, he did the set, like he did, he and Steve did the set. Mm -hmm. So it's been, uh, it's it's been tough this past year, but it's really cool seeing all his work finally get to pay off. If this hadn't come out, I would have been really really sad. Yeah, so much work went into it. So uh, we're really excited about that. He did Munchkin Babies was a great set. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to check that out, he did a lot. He did that set with uh, Elaine. Uh, so yeah, uh, Andrew's Andrew's influence still his fingerprints all over Munchkin and will be forever. So. Uh, yeah, I think that covers all the fan questions here. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to talk about, John? Um, yeah, Dal of Igor is finally going. <laughs> oh, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. No, I saw I, I saw that uh the big art spread that you have of like the convention. Yes. Uh, that's great. I love yes, that. The There's first, so many little the, Easter eggs. The first new Dork Tower collection in 15 years. Um Dork Tower when when my daughter was born. I just needed to spend more time with my family. So the self-publishing, well, it's not really self-publishing. We sold like close to a half a million copies of the Dork Tower comic books and a hundred thousand copies of the trade paperbacks. Um, So it's actually, you know, proper publishing at that point, I guess. But the business side of that was not my favorite aspect of the job. And, you know, I needed to spend more family time uh, when my daughter was born and so I just stopped doing the comic books. Um, and then my, my daughter started reading and she started reading Dork Tower and she wanted to know what happened next. <laughs> it's like, 
well honey you happen next frankly but um uh so yeah i pulled together uh the the last of the comic books and wrote a ton of new material drew a ton of new material for it and so yeah it should be out in a few months everything is done it's all pulled together i'm extremely happy with how it went there are some munchkin easter eggs in that giant convention yes. scene some ogre fact, easter eggs yes yes and steve and andrew are both in that scene um Gale too we've had all, all our yes. friends in there <laughs> yes yes um so that that will be out shortly um the dork tower webcomic has been going three times a week since the patreon began a few years ago and that makes me enormously happy um but no it's just uh really right now i'm so excited that batman is going to be out it's you know uh it's a wonderful set i had a huge amount of fun working on it even even doing the the the, um the level board was a lot of fun Level board is awesome. If you if you didn't have a chance to check any of the game out, by the way, uh, I know we've just been talking about it, but last week uh, Steve was here and we unboxed some of it. If you guys uh, missed that, that is on YouTube. We have the recorded recording of that uh, broadcast, and you can check out the level board. We looked at a lot of the cards, the character cards, things like that. So that level board is great. It's like a Gotham skyline, and the uh, bat symbol is essentially like the level ten. It's great. It's great. So it's I love it. You're uh, uh, we did the video. I mentioned it before. Uh, I love the video so much. I was oh my gosh. very glad was, that you got to see that. I was, yeah, I, I might have, I may have geeked out a little bit on oh. social media about that. Trust me, <laughs> I, this is the first time I've seen Munchkin art or your Munchkin art in motion. I was like, they sent it back. I was like, this is amazing. They were it's really uh, excited to use like elements of your art too. Cause a lot, if you watch the video, a lot of the backgrounds are like your backgrounds from the cards and the art. They had me pull that specifically out separate. So they could uh, use it as their backgrounds and, who, and the would, board too. Who was that powerhouse? Did they animate that? Uh, no, it wasn't kind of awesome. powerhouse. It was, uh, we're, we're working with Cryptozoic on this and, uh, oh. they, it's, uh, re- it's related to Cryptozoic. It's a production team that they've worked with and, nice. uh, but they are, I, I don't think it's powerhouse, but they, they, they are Netflix yeah. animators and they've gone back and forth. Uh, Sweet. The, the guy who did the voice has actually done a lot of the uh, uh, voice work for like uh, Batman toy commercials and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. he's got Batman experience, bat experience. Yes, bat experience. <laughs> bat experience. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us so much, John. It's been awesome talking about Munchkin in general, Munchkin Batman. And Everyone at home, if you want this game, which you want this game, you do want uh, this game. You can, I want this game. Yes, give me the game. You don't have to want. buy it. We'll we'll make sure you get one. If you want to buy it, feel free. <laughs> uh, but you can uh, follow this on Kickstarter. Uh, the link will be in the comments below, and uh, you can click notify me on the campaign. You'll get an alert when it goes live. It will be going live before the end of the month. The goal is next week, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, yeah, we were really excited to see it go live. Uh, follow it and it'll be up for about two weeks on Kickstarter. So keep an wow. eye out for that. And awesome. uh, if you want to meet John in person, FedorCon is happening as of now. <laughs> Barring <laughs> any weird things, uh, you can sign up for that as well. That, those will be in the comments below. Uh, John, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. And everyone, thank you for joining us as well. We'll see you next week on SJ Games Live. Same bat time, same bat station. There you go.